Today we're giving you the top seven legendary commanders that you don't have to max to get a ton of value from them. These are commanders where you are going to max the first three skills. That's five, 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 one as the skill distribution, and these commanders are real good. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and today we're talking about commanders where you don't have to spend all 700 sculptures to unlock the expertise skill to get the majority of the value. So the commanders we're going to be recommending to you in this video are going to take 390 sculptures to get to that 5551 state. And commanders that are good as a non-maxed legendary typically have an expertise skill that is not as good or has a minimal boost to their effectiveness or relevance on the battlefield. So to just give a quick example of a commander where that's the case, Guan Yu, like his expertise skill is fine, but he's not that much more combat effective with the expertise skill compared to when he doesn't have it. It's fine, it's great, but it's not life-changing. Another example of a legendary where the expertise skill, like it's it's fine, but it's not going to be completely life-changing would be to look at like Leonidas, right? Most of the time, you're not going to get below 10% to even trigger this expertise skill in the first place. So these commanders we're recommending to you have expertise skills with minimal relevance or are just not necessary to really enjoy the commander. And every commander we're going to talk about today has relevance in the open field. They've got a high baseline value of relevance in Rise of Kingdoms, and I think they're commanders that are going to be relevant for a fairly long time in the game. By the way, let me interject for just a moment to say that tomorrow we're going to go live with a video about the best 5-5. Five -five. 1-1 one, one legendary commander. So if you had even fewer legendary commander sculptures to invest, or you wanted to know some just crazy good commanders at a tiny amount of sculptures, we're going to be talking about folks like Leonidas. He's going to be top tier on that list. Subscribe so you don't miss that. And by the way, if you think you're going to get value from this video, throw a like on here so that I know this is the sort of stuff that you're interested in seeing more of. Now, there are some commanders we're not including in today's list. Commanders like Esong and Alexander the Great, because these two commanders, like, just, just go max them, okay? Just, you should just expertise these commanders. And as we make our way through the list today, my goal is to give you these 5551 commanders where you can just stop after you've gotten to that 5551 state, or you can use it as a stepping stone, as kind of a long-term investment toward something you wanted to do anyways. These are going to be commanders that are really strong, all around. Before we get into our top seven, I want to very briefly give you commanders that I haven't included. Uh, they're either going to have a weird skill configuration or you need to max them to get the real value or they're, they're just not a good long-term investment. We're going to talk about those very briefly. Then we'll go into our top seven. Of course, in all my videos these days, there's timestamps. So you can jump to whatever portion of this video you're interested in. Let's talk about the commanders that are not in this list, not because they're bad, but because you need a weird skill configuration. In other words, if you could deploy skills not randomly and to whichever skill you want, commanders like, for example, Guan Yu would be really good as a 5155. The problem is that in order to actually get the commander in that state, there's just a lot of randomness that's involved. You need to use skill resets. You need to get really lucky. Skill resets are very hard to obtain, and you can't get them consistently yet in Rise of Kingdoms. So a commander like Guan Yu, whose second skill is for hitting garrisons, would have been a really good candidate on this list, but I've not included them because there's just too much randomness involved. You could go for it, but you might end up in a bad spot. So all of the commanders where this is the case includes Guan Yu, Attila, Zhang Yu, Leonidas, Tamaris, Nabu, Constantine, all of them have a second or third skill that you really want to skip. It's not going to be all that relevant in the open field. And so I haven't included them in this list because this is a 5551 five, list. Value guaranteed, not a chance for value. I also haven't included commanders like Chandragupta and Harold because the way their skills work. You need them to be maxed or nearly maxed to get the maximum value. So for Chandra Gupta, he's got stacks of blessing. You get more of these when you have him expertise. Don't mess around with Chandra Gupta. I think you get a lot of value 
by having him expertise. Similarly, I think Harold is that way as well. The trick with Harold is that he's got a stacking defense debuff, which is really bad. Um, and that debuff is removed when you have your fourth skill trigger. So you really need Harold to be 5155 five, five before you really want to be using him. There's so much more value when you have this fourth skill maxed that a lot of players are probably just going to have to take him to expertise anyways to get to that state. So I didn't include Harold in this list because I think it's really important that you have this skill over here maxed and it's just too inconsistent to be able to get that without going for the expertise. Now, when it comes to commanders I didn't include because they're just not a good investment, you know, these are commanders that technically, you know, Khan, if you look at his skills, they're pretty relevant to the open field. You'd think that like a 5-5-5-1 five, 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 Khan would be pretty decent, right? Except Khan is just not a good investment right now in Rise of Kingdoms. This is also true for Edward uh, of Woodstock, El Cid, they're fine commanders. They they are they really are, but not good investments. So I'm not including them on this list because I actually don't think you should be investing them in this way. And I suppose the last category of commanders I just outright didn't include in this list is a bunch of garrison commanders. So Theodora is not an open field commander. There's there's no there's no world in which you can really garrison these days, especially in the late to end game season of conquest, even KVK seasons two and three. You can't garrison without max commanders. So I didn't include garrison commanders in this list because it just doesn't make sense for what we're trying to accomplish here. So let's get things started with number seven on the list. And this is an oldie but goodie, Richard the First, baby. You know, when you look at his skill distribution, it's actually pretty incredible. The first skill, I mean, his active skill, of course, you've got to go and max that. It's got healing, the damage reduction to the enemies, and an area of effect. March speed reduction, second skill, damage taken reduction is so good. And by the way, these first two skills do not care about the troop type, which is kind of a big deal. The third skill is giving you a cool 30% of stats. And I get that in the season of conquest days, some of the commanders there are going to give even more stats. But these first three skills are all really, really, really good. The fourth skill on Richard the First. Yeah, it improves his healing effectiveness, but it's honestly going from 10% to 30% more healing boost. Not a big deal. Truly not a big deal for the 310 sculptures it takes to max the final skill on a commander. Also, the expertise skill, it's good. 5% less damage taken. It's definitely good. Don't get me wrong. And all infantry units led by this commander deal 2% Increased damage to cavalry. I mean, whatever. The slow is actually some really cool utility every 10 seconds. You can slow a target by 50% for 5 seconds. It's actually a pretty cool expertise. Don't get me wrong. But as far as commanders go, Richard is kind of like the textbook great commander as a 5-5-5-1. Five, 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 he is tremendously effective. He gains a little bit more effectiveness. It's true. The utility he gains as an expertise is good, but you could use him as a 5551 and he is really strong. Now, in terms of his long term investment, I actually think as a long term investment, it's just okay. In almost all situations, I'd rather have AoE damage rather than a healing effect with an AoE debuff. So, this is a commander that makes the bottom of the list because I think his long term investment, like he'll be fine in the open field, but. There are just so many things these days countering healing. Why bring a commander that is focused on healing when you could bring a commander that does area of effect damage? You accumulate a lot of kills by doing that, which is necessary in KVK these days to get your rewards. I think he's a solid commander. He's going to be great in Canyon. He's got a lot of long-term value, but I think there are better. Clocking in at number six is a commander that I bet most people would not expect to see on this list at all, and they probably haven't thought about this, but Cyrus the Great is actually a super legit 5-5-5-1 five, 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 commander. Maxing the first three skills, of course, gives you the active skill, 1400 damage factor, and making it so that the target takes 20% increased additional damage factor. We've got 15% march speed, 30% attack, and a 10% chance to deal 
250 damage factor per second to the target over three seconds. So that's another 750 damage factor to the target. Yeah, that's strong. And while that's in effect, by the way, the target deals 40% less skill damage. But we're not done yet. The next skill is still half as effective as it's going to be when it's completely maxed, which is pretty remarkable. So when Cyrus is attacked, you have a chance to do an AoE, a 10% chance to do damage over time, hitting three targets for two seconds. That's going to be a total of 300 damage factor to each target at the base level, by the way. And you're hitting three targets, so that's another 900 damage factor worth of AoE value, and it can trigger at most once every five seconds. Obviously, having the skill maxed does more, but you're looking at Four skills that are super legit in the open field, doing some serious damage, serious utility. I actually think Cyrus the Great is very underrated in this way, and I've seen people using him and kind of obsessing about him in the open field, and I think I kind of am understanding why. He's going to do a lot of damage, and although he's a little bit of a glass cannon, might want to pair with a commander like Ramses, who's a little bit more tanky. I'm actually... Pretty impressed with how Cyrus stacks up on the list of 5551 five, candidate commanders. Number six is where I put him. The expertise skill, don't get me wrong, it's good. It's real good. When you use an active skill, you get 20% attack, 20% defense for three seconds, and 50 rage per second. Woo! That's good. That's definitely good. But you don't have to have him expertise to get a lot of the value here. And I think he'd be a good candidate for this list, specifically because he could be a long-term investment you work on over time, and eventually you'll get the expertise, getting incremental value as you go with a commander that's already really solid. Clocking in at number five is a cavalry commander you probably didn't expect me to include, and that is Takeda. And although Takeda, he's a really good commander with sustain, right? I prefer AoE damage. He's He's more of a sustain-oriented cavalry commander. It would be a mistake to deny just how good he is. As a 5-5-5-1, five, 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 you're maxing his active skill, which is going to make it so that there's a chance for the enemy to take a boost in damage from normal attacks every couple seconds. He's going to make it so that you've got cavalry attack boosted by 40% and a chance to get some extra march speed. Defense boosted by 40%, so that's already 80% of stats, which is kind of insane, with a healing factor tied to the active skill, which is really quite nice. And then also, the fourth skill is super relevant to the open field. I mean, okay, at, at its baseline level, it's not going to do a lot for you compared to a skill like Cyrus had, but it's going to reduce the skill damage you take, and there's a chance that you take less normal attack and counterattack damage, which is pretty nice. Obviously, this is a commander that is stronger with his expertise skill, and so much so that I almost would have put him in the category of, like, you really need to max this commander to get full value, but I think as a 5-5-5-1, five, 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 this is a commander that you can start to get some pretty good value with, depending on what other cavalry commanders you're already using, specifically if you've got, like, a Saladin already, this is a commander you could start to get a lot of value with. If you've got Attila already, 5-5, five, 5-1 five, five, Takeda is going to be really great. I worry a little bit about the number of pair options you've got with him. However, he is a strong commander for this list, and I think number 5 on the list is pretty appropriate. So far, we've got an infantry commander, an archer commander, and a cavalry commander on the list, and at number 4 is a commander you might not have been thinking about to use in a non-expertise way, and that's Trajan. And it's taken people a very long time to warm up to the reality of how strong Trajan is, especially if you're being a team player and buffing nearby marches, especially when those marches aren't necessarily your own. But the ability to give extra rage and skill damage, I mean, look, Joan of Arc is good, and Trajan is legendary tier, giving buffs and rage, he's quite strong. By maxing the first three skills, you're getting access to the full defense and health bonus. That health bonus only works when you're outside of Alliance territory. You're gaining access to the full debuff to the enemy when you bring mixed troops. That is a 20% damage taken increase, 10% extra capacity, 
and damage factor whenever your active skill is used, which is great. Your final skill here is going to be a third as good as what it is when it's maxed, which for a skill that stacks, I have to say, obviously more points into here is better. This skill is giving you 2% at the base level defense every eight seconds, and that's stacking. So over the course of a longer fight, you could end up with 10 total stacks, and that will put you at 20% extra defense. Again, more points here is great. Uh, I mean, significantly better, let's say, right? Like 6% of defense ends up being 60% total when it's max stacked. But most fights aren't lasting that long anyways. So this is totally fine in a non-max state. The expertise skill, yeah, it's nice. It's giving you more rage boost. It's giving you more skill damage boost. It's making it so that you have a little bit more damage factor. But if you've got Trajan as a 5-5, five, 5-1, five, five, you could start using him. You could use Ethelfled as the secondary. It's a great place to put your Ethelfled. I use Trajan Ethelfled. I maxed Trajan specifically because I thought the Trajan Ethel combo was so good. And I think this is a great stepping stone toward that longer term investment. Trajan's a commander. I think you would want to go all the way to max at some point. But if you get him to even like 5-5-1-1, five, five, one, one, you could start to use him and you get more skills to him. You get 5-5-5-1 five, 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 and you are good to go. Hunt for the expertise skill over time, but start using him and getting value. Number three on our list is also kind of an oldie but goodie. That is Ramses. Ramses has been out for a very long time. He gets much stronger with his expertise skill. Make no mistake about it. But the first three skills are so good that, yeah, you can use them not maxed and still get a ton of value. What are we looking at with Ramses? A cool 800 damage factor per second for two seconds. That's 1,600 damage factor and a 25% defense reduction over those two seconds as well, which is quite nice. Now, when he's expertise, you get a healing immunity effect debuff applied and more damage factor, a lot of damage factor, actually. You jump up to 1,000 damage factor per second. But even without that expertise skill, on the second skill, you've got 40% attack. That's nice. You've got 30% skill damage taken reduction with, by the way, the 10% chance to gain 40% attack and... 40% march speed for three seconds when you're being attacked. So we're talking in just those two skills about the possibility of 80% of stats and 30% skill damage reduction and 40% march speed uh, when you're being attacked. Again, you got to be being hit there to have that stuff trigger, but this commander is great, even not maxed. And the final skill, yes, it gets much better. When it's maxed 500 healing factor and 40 percent defense for three seconds obviously that's that's better than the non-maxed version but it's still 200 healing factor and 20 percent defense when he's not maxed as a 5551 legendary ramses is scary good you definitely could use him and pair with a commander like esong and be in really great shape He's number three on the list, and he's definitely top tier and a great long-term investment that you can work toward that expertise over time. Now we're getting to the final commanders on the list, and at number two, they've really earned their spot. That is William. William does some really crazy stuff. He's a very offensive commander. He doesn't really offer a ton of tankiness, although we'll talk about that in just a second. His active skill is very strong. It does do area of effect damage, although it's kind of hard to hit multiple targets. In big brawls, don't worry about that. You'll definitely be hitting multiple targets. And he's also going to reduce their march speed and make it so that extra skill damage buffs cannot take effect. That's Esong's fourth skill. That's, heck, skill damage city skins. Like, all buffs that give you skill damage cannot take effect during William's active skill when that debuff is applied. So that's pretty strong, but there's more. The second skill is going to make it so you have 20% cav attack, 15% march speed, and when you're off your alliance's territory, 10% increased damage. That's a big deal. 
The third skill is really good for swarming targets. This is actually boosted by the expertise skill, okay? And it's going to make it so that all of your cavalry have a 20% attack boost, and you have a 10% chance to deal 800 damage factors to the target, and if the target is surrounded, they take extra damage based on the number of troops that are surrounding if you had five troops surrounding the target, okay? That is a cool 400 extra damage factor. Woo! So that's 1,200 damage factor in total for a maximum swarm target. Obviously, that gets a little bit better with the expertise skill. You're going and uh, upping the amount of attack you get from 20% to 30%, and you boost the amount of damage that you deal when the target is swarmed by an extra 20 damage factor per swarming unit. I mean, it's honestly not that big a deal. You also boost the base damage you deal uh, from 800 damage factor to 1,000 damage factor. So you're looking at 1,500 damage factor and 30% attack in a best case scenario compared to the 1,200 damage factor and 20% attack in the base version. I mean, the expertise skill is good. It's just not insane, okay? The fourth skill, though, is kind of insane, and it doesn't need to be maxed to still be insane. When your active skill, which because of its weird shape, it's a rectangle, is harder to hit multiple targets, but when you do, you are going to give your march and nearby marches, a total of five marches, including uh, his own march, the defense boost of 10% and 50 rage per second for three seconds, and it's that rage per second I'm most excited about. Yeah, when you max this, obviously the extra 10% defense that you're giving over here is really nice. It's 20% defense boost at max. But this skill is so good that as a 5-5-5-1, five, 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 it will be a mistake not to use William. He's phenomenal. 10 out of 10, can recommend, very strong. The only problem is that he's really not a good primary commander. Trust me, I took him to 60, I tested this out. He really needs to be a secondary commander to some other cavalry commander, which is a segue to the number one cavalry commander in our list, and that is Saladin, baby. Another oldie but goodie. Saladin is one of the first cavalry commanders you'll get access to in Rise of Kingdoms as they start to expand the list of commanders that you have access to, and he is really good. The first three skills are all oriented toward the open field, and the final fourth skill here is for hitting cities. So for that reason, you don't need to have any points at all in this fourth skill. This is one of the few commanders that's on this list that you could just take to 5-5, five, 5-1 five, five, and stop, and that would be a very reasonable choice. The expertise skill obviously adds value. It enhances the active skill. It's going to give you 300 more damage factor. It's going to make it so the march speed reduction effect and the healing reduction effect is boosted. But many players will take Saladin to 5-5, five, 5-1, five, five, and stop. Now, the other reason that Saladin is really good on this list is that he's got the support tree, and that is so good for a primary commander. That is giving you a rage engine from Rejuvenate that is shockingly good. It is giving you access to skill damage taken ruction that is shockingly good. Saladin is a top tier primary commander for cavalry. You can do Saladin William. You can do Saladin Takeda. You can do Saladin, I mean, not that I would recommend Khan, but like Khan or all these other commanders that are more glass cannon, you can put them as a secondary to Saladin and he's going to give them a lot of protection. The second skill is giving you 20% defense on the topic of that protection also 20% attack and 5% march speed. That's 40% of stats with some march speed. That's nice. The next, man, this third skill, 30% skill damage taken reduction and 20% counterattack damage taken reduction. Saladin is really strong. And with the addition of commanders like William into the game, he has seen renewed relevance. For a time, he really wasn't all that relevant. because It's kind of like, well, what, what commander are you going to pair him with? But the Saladin-William combo brings it back, baby. And for 390 sculptures to take Saladin to 5-5, five, 5-1, five, five, and 390 sculptures to take William to 5-5, five, 5-1, five, five, you could pair those two together. And for the price that is 
only slightly higher than having one max commander, I think this is a great march to bring to the battlefield. If you're trying to bring more marches or you're in the early game and you're just getting started and you want to have more stuff you can use, or even if you're just working towards one of your second or first really strong marches, the Saladin-William combo is totally the jam. If you found this video helpful, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. Tomorrow, we're going to go live with our 5511 guide. So if you had even fewer sculptures to invest in legendaries, we're going to give you legendary commanders that, okay, over the long term, you probably want to put more sculptures into, but even as a 5511, only two skills maxed, you're going to get a ton of value. So subscribe so you don't miss that video. Throw a like on here if you found this helpful. Leave a comment down below if there's any commanders that should have been on this list, that, but we just missed them. And it is entirely possible we missed a few commanders here. I mean, heck, I didn't talk about Ethelflaed because you're just Maxer, but you get the idea. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.